A Look Inside the Looking Glass by Kathy Ann M. Kowalski. Alice entered a crazy backward world in Lewis Carroll's classic book, Through the Looking Glass. Look inside a real mirror, though, and you'll find some fascinating technology. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Glass mirror making began around the 13th century. Craftsmen improved their techniques over the next several hundred years. Now, modern mirror making takes place in factories with strict quality control and machines that do much of the work. The wall mirrors around your home start out as a piece of flat glass, usually from one eighth to one quarter of an inch thick. It has to be the best quality of glass that we can produce, says Tom Mooborn at Glassmaker AFG Industries Incorporated in Tennessee. This means no bubbles, but no bits of foreign material, no lines, and no distortions. Most mirror glass has the same makeup as window glass, mostly silica plus limestone and tiny amounts of carbon and other materials. But mirror glass must pass stricter inspection standards. After all, when you look through a window, your eyes are usually focused at or near infinity, so you don't notice defects. When you comb your hair in a mirror, your eyes are focused much closer, on a point less than two feet away, so the defects are more apparent. At the mirror factory, the glass goes on a conveyor belt for a process called chemical wet deposition. First, cleaning removes any dirt or other impurities. Next, a sprayer coats the glass with a thin layer of tin chloride solution. After that, another sprayer applies a very thin coating of silver nitrate solution. When it's applied onto this glass surface with the tin already there, it, in essence, plates, says Drew Mayberry at Lenore Mirror Company in North Carolina. It creates a surface. Other factories often use aluminum solutions, solutions instead of silver, but, says Mayberry, nothing gives you as true a reflection as a coating of silver. The silvery coating is only about two micrometers or microns thick, but this is enough to make the glass opaque and to reflect light. Layers of copper, paint, or other material go over the silvery layer to protect it. Additional processes grind and seal the mirror edges. These steps help to prevent oxidation, which can cause black spots. Curved mirrors are made in a similar way, except that the glass curves either inward, concave, or outward, convex. More mirrors. With most mirrors, you look through the glass to see your reflection. However, some first surface mirrors have the reflective coating in front of the glass. These mirrors are more fragile, but they produce better quality for telescopes and other special uses. The silvery coating also can include different metals. Nighttime rearview mirrors in cars often use lead sulfide, for example, so that approaching headlights don't blind drivers. Then there are two-way mirrors. Some are made like standard metallic mirrors, but with a thinner silvery layer so that they're not really opaque. Others are highly reflective glass, like that used on the exterior of some office buildings. In either case, two-way mirrors only work if the room being observed is more brightly lit than the viewing area. Think of it as looking into a well-lit room from outside at night. If the drapes are open, you can see in, but people inside won't see you. High-performance mirrors. A conventional mirror reflects a broad range of light energy from all angles, but it also absorbs some of that energy. In many cases, that's no problem. In high power applications, though, even a tiny percentage of energy absorption can destroy that mirror. Also, some applications use only a narrow band of the electromagnetic spectrum, such as red light or infrared light. That's where dielectric mirrors come in. Dielectric is basically a material that does not conduct electricity, explains Esther Siren at CVI Optical Components in California. Examples include aluminum oxide, titanium oxide, and silicon dioxide. These substances are normally transparent. The manufacturing process layers different dielectric materials inside a vacuum chamber at very high temperatures. High-performance dielectric mirrors can have 40, even 50 layers, depending on the application, says Siren. Each layer may be less than a millionth of an inch thick. The resulting device reflects back virtually all of the energy within certain wavelengths of the electromagnetic spectrum, while letting energy in other wavelengths pass through. 
which wavelengths get reflected depends on the layer's composition, which varies based on the mirror's intended use. Many detection systems use dielectric mirrors. Lasers, copiers, and some astronomy instruments also use dielectric mirrors. Beyond all of this, scientists at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, have developed a mirror that combines some qualities of conventional mirrors with dielectric mirrors. Their perfect mirror, as they call it, can reflect light from many different angles. However, it absorbs little or no energy, and it can be made to reflect certain wavelengths of energy. Last spring, doctors at Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston used the perfect mirror to reflect and direct a laser beam inside a cancer patient. The mirror let doctors remove a tumor with only minimally invasive surgery instead of a major operation. Who will develop some of the next advances in mirror technology? Look in the mirror. Maybe it will be you.